Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit, I'm CP and in this video I'm reviewing Cointreau. As per usual, this review will be conducted using the Bespoke Unit liquor formula, a quantifiable review matrix that you can either use at home to uh, evaluate your own spirits or you can use as a quick reference if you don't have time to watch this whole video. Simply look in the description below, you'll find a link to the final written review, which will give you a full breakdown and the full PDF version so you can learn about all its characteristics within a minute. Quantor is not actually a specific beverage, but a brand that was founded in 1849 by brothers Adolphe and Edouard Jean Quantreau. In 1875, they introduced this orange peel liqueur, which is now recognized as a triple sec. However, when it was released, it was much, much sweeter. These days it's drier, which is actually quite interesting given that it's still quite sweet. In 1990, the brand was bought by Rémy Martin, the renowned uh, cognac brand, and uh, but it continues to thrive under its new family. This particular bottle is a little bit different. Uh, typically you have a, a bottle which is orange in color with a white strip given some information about the brand as well as a Ban Saint Cointreau, but this is a limited edition that was designed by the designer Vincent Daré. I thought that it was quite interesting to use this as a departure from the uh, usual bottle, uh, so I hope it doesn't cause too much confusion. Anyway, uh, that all being said, let's get into the spirit itself. So it is produced in the Men et Loire region in France, which is towards the uh, west, not far from the coast. It is uh, actually produced in the village of saint barthélemy d'Anjou, which is near Angers. Angers. I'm not exactly sure how I would pronounce it in English. Angers. Anyway, moving on. So as I mentioned, it's a triple sec. It is produced from a uh, base of grain alcohol, which is then steeped with uh, orange peels and various oils to produce its unique flavor. There's no age st statement for obvious reasons. There's no casking either, and the alcohol by volume is 40%. We'll now jump in to the robe. So as you can see, I have a bit of Cointreau in this glass, and it is a clear liquid although you can see that there are some very thick droplets of oil that appear within the liquid, and then when you have the legs, they kind of stick there for quite a while before slowly making their way down. There's actually some of the liquid that has dried on the side of the glass when I sampled it before doing this video, and it has left a white residue. If I were to use a uh, residue test, which is where you basically look for any uh, additives, so that's by adding some alcohol and then rubbing it in your hands until it's uh, rubbed away. It's quite sticky because it is quite sweet and it, it contains many oils. And then finally, in terms of depth, well, you can't really see much depth here, but, depth here, but because it's quite a hazy liquid, it does reflect the light somewhat. In terms of the nose, so the nose feel is quite prickly. There's a bouquet of uh, orange peel, a bit of wax, some grapefruit, but overall it's gonna be kind of a, an alcoholic, uh, boozy orange uh, essence. The intensity isn't overbearing though, and the diversity of uh, notes, they're gonna be quite limited to the sort of citrus family. And then in terms of co complexity, you're not really gonna find any here. Next, we're gonna talk about the palette. So in terms of the primary flavors, Pinkies up. The um, overall bouquet is sweet with an oily mouthfeel. The aftertaste does give you a little bit of a fiery burn, but it's the oils that dominate. It opens with some orange peel, as can be expected, which means it's going to be a little bit more herbaceous than pure orange. There's some neroli, some orange leaf, and some citrus thyme. That, then it moves onto the heart, which really develops a more spicy profile. There's a hint of floral rose, some nutmeg, and then grapefruit. And eventually we get to the finish, which consists of fresh oranges, some rosemary, and caramel. Overall, you're not looking at much complexity, although it does offer you some uh, nuances. There's a nice velvety, uh, oily texture that leaves a coating on the tongue. It's gonna to be quite youthful in terms of maturity. The depth is quite, uh, quite balanced. The harmony is gonna be balanced as well. And there is a slight lingering finish, but it doesn't last too long. You give it a couple of seconds and it's pretty much dissipated to leave just the alcohol on your palate. And in terms of versatility, well, it can actually be enjoyed neat. 
uh, with ice. I would suggest drinking it at room temperature like I did. is isn't gonna be as pleasant, although you won't have any alcohol bloom. It's certainly drinkable, but I would certainly uh, insist that if you're gonna drink it neat, consider having a couple of bits of ice in there, maybe even top it up with a bit of water if you enjoyed the purity of the orange peel. But I'll talk about top cocktails in just a second. We're gonna first talk about the experience, which talks about the presentation. And as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, this is a limited edition bottle, and I absolutely love the style. It's reminiscent of Picasso and this kind of sunshine essence of uh, how you would really consider the refreshing characteristics of this drink. I find that the artistic approach is quite unique, and I'm pretty glad I got this. I'm probably gonna keep this bottle. Packaging, there is none. The screw tap cap has got a uh, plastic insulator to it, which I imagine is to stop it sticking because of the orange. And as it, in terms of occasion, this is uh, quite uh, versatile in terms of the occasions themselves, because uh, Cointreau is uh, basically a classic cocktail ingredient and is used in many of the most more affluent classic cocktails. Just give me a second before I get there. Um, in terms of value for money, it's actually quite pricey in the United States. I was somewhat surprised. You're looking about $46 for a bottle. Otherwise, uh, in France, I picked this up for just uh, about 15 euros, $18, something around that. Finally, we're going to talk about the cocktails and the pairings. And these aren't scored. This is just in the bottom right-hand corner of the uh, sheet. And it will just give you a couple of ideas as a thought experiment. As I mentioned, Cointreau is a classic ingredient that is a key part in a variety of um, old school cocktails from the late 19th century, early 20th century. So if you want to make things like a sidecar, a uh, Sa Pirata, or even a Corpse Revival number two, which is my particular favorite with a little bit of a dash of absinthe in the glass beforehand, this is a uh, the perfect option. Otherwise, it's also an important ingredient for margaritas. And there's also here on the back of the bottle a uh, suggestion for a Cointreau Fizz, which is basically sparkling water, lime and Cointreau, which would be very refreshing, particularly during a hot summer's day. Generally speaking, Cointreau isn't going to be the central ingredient in a cocktail. It's normally going to be used for adjusting the flavor and adding a little bit of orange zest and some headiness to it. Then when it comes to pairings, I haven't really gone into pairings here, but more actually that Cointreau is a great ingredient for cooking. So you could use it for producing a canard à l'orange, so you could consider marinating some duck with Cointreau, some orange and uh, some honey to produce a succulent dish. Alternatively for uh, desserts, it's also used for making a tartata, which is with uh, apples. And I also heard that it can be used for making an angel food cake, which I personally am not familiar with, but there you go. As for cigars, if you're going to be having it neat or with ice, consider something that will have some citrus qualities as well. I would suggest, for example, a Gloria Cubana Serie D number no. 5 that does have a slight citrus note in it. That's a Cuban cigar, so it might not be available to you in the USA. If that's the case, consider instead a Placencia Almel del Campo or alternatively a Nub Connecticut. Overall, Cointreau is an integral part of most drink cabinets if you're going to make cocktails and if that's something that you enjoy. If you don't have a bottle, you should probably invest in one. You won't use much for each cocktail, just a dash tends to be enough or half a shot. In either case, it is basically obligatory to have in some form or another. That's all for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions or queries regarding Cointreau, and especially if you have any opinions that differ to mine, we always love to see contrast contrasting thoughts. Until our next video, why don't you head to bespokeunion.com and see our vast resource of spirit guides. Meanwhile, head to bespokeunion.com as well to check out all the other lifestyle subjects that we cover. Until next time, take care.